Hello people, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines Modular Builds. We are having a wonderful day. And last time out we worked on the oil refinery, and you guys really enjoyed this episode. Thank you for all the support on it. Uh, I'm glad that the modular builds are still being as well received as they are. We're going to be rounding out the industries today with a ore industry build. And I can hear the screams of joy of a thousand children in the comments. <laughs> because this has been on the list for a long time. And uh, we're finally getting around to doing it. If you haven't seen the oil industry build, uh, the oil refinery, uh, this is in the playlist, which is linked below. So oil, oil ore is represented by, I will confuse oil and ore, by the way. I always do it. <laughs> so we're working on ore, just to be clear. Uh, obviously represented by this little blue patch anywhere on your map. If you are playing with the better landscaping tools on, then you can paint these out yourself. Otherwise, you will need to go ahead and find one. Obviously, everyone's map is different, and your oil, your ore... <laughs> I'll, I'll never get it right. Your ore area will be a different shape. There might be more of it, there might be less of it, and you also need to remember that if you are playing without unlimited resources, eventually this build will become redundant. So whether or not you want to put this much time and effort into an, indu an industrial build that won't work after a bit of time is up to you. But just play with unlimited resources on anyway. So once you've found your ore area, we're going to come into our terraforming tools. We are going to grab the shift terrain. We're going to go to the largest brush size with the highest intensity. And we're just going to start sinking something down here. So I'm going to right click. You notice it makes a little divot. I'm probably going to go for sorry about that. Just do it slow clicks. Just get get the depth right for what you want. And then we're going to switch over to our level terrain tool. And we're going to right click the bottom of this ditch that we've just made. So we set the height as that's the one we want to level out to. And then we're going to start pushing. And we're going to make this. So really, you can't really follow my measurements here. Obviously, your ore will be different. And just kind of help push yourself out a little bit of um, a little bit of a road network, a, a kind of a ditch, you know, like a trench. You can change the shape up if you like. You know, I've got quite a, a large ore area here, so I think I might push it out maybe a little bit this way. Uh, round it off towards here. These look really nice up alongside uh, a highway as well. Okay, so we'll push this out, make it whatever shape you want. Just kind of get that general shape, and um, that's going to fit your ore area. And then you'll be seeing kind of these little slopes right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come into our roads. We are going to grab the two lane gravel. We're going to turn off all the snapping and use the freeform tool. And then we're going to come along onto one of these sides. So roughly about halfway up the slope, getting nice and close so you can judge the halfway point as best you can. We're going to click on it. And then we're going to start drawing a gravel road all the way around the edge of it. Do it in little small increments and then we're basically we're just going to flank the shape of the ditch that we've just made with a gravel road so i'll go ahead and fill this one out and then we'll be right back okay so there we go that's what you're looking for we can see we kind of have like this tiered effect starting to appear now which is great and then we're going to do something similar again this time so what we want to do now is turn on your road guideline snapping point and then we're going to do exactly the same thing, but on the floor of the thing that of the ditch that we've just painted out. So you'll see the road guidelines come in, and then this is what you want to do again. Just want to keep following those road guidelines up into the different points, and then just do this again. So I'll rinse and repeat, and we'll be right back. So once you've got your second road in, you'll be having something that looks a little bit like this. Uh, but we need to go ahead and make sure we actually connect these two roads up. So what we're going to do is we're going to break a little section of the top road that we drew in. Probably about there, it should be okay. And then we're going to come down and hook into the bottom level. And then you can draw this one back in again as well. So you'll have just a little connection like that. You can do this in multiple places around if you want to, or you can just do it in one. It's up to you as kind of what aesthetic look you want to go for. I'll probably do it in a couple of different places towards the detailing end of the episode as well. But for right now, this will do uh, for what I need it to. We're going to dive back into the world of terraforming tools. We're going to grab our shift terrain again. And then this time, 
we're going to create another little divot on the floor of this little pit here. We're going to grab the level terrain. We're going to right click the bottom of it and then we're going to push it out. And then because we've already drawn in that second road, it will align perfectly up and against it. I'm pretty sure you guys can see what kind of theme we're heading for here with our mining pit, right? And basically, if you want to, um, just a little idea here, if you are working with something a little bigger than this, you can repeat this process as many times as you want and you will gradually have this tiered, tiered and tiered effect as you move further and further down uh, into the ground. So if that's something that you want to do, then go ahead. I think I'll probably stick with two layers. I might even try three. I guess we'll see how it turns out. Uh, but this is kind of the general theme and shape you want to go for, right? So of course, now we want to go ahead and paint out our industrial area. And um, paint it out, of course, over all the ore, but also give a little bit of leeway either side as well, because we will be placing buildings outside of the actual ore itself. And then we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some ore stuff. Obviously, we need the ore industry main building first of all. So I kind of like to place this looking into the pit. That makes sense. So what I'm going to do is we have road guy line on, don't we? Yes, we do. And so I think I'll go for right about here. I'll use this road guideline as a snap point. I'm going to draw in a small industrial road right along the edge here. And then this is where I'll place my ore industrial main building. We'll place it in just about here. Imagine this is kind of the main building. We have some like office and administration here and it kind of overlooks uh, the project, the industrial area, you know. Got a nice view from here. So we're going to come ahead and grab ourselves a dirt road. And I'm going to draw this along the bottom floor of my pit here. I'm going to dive into garbage and industry. And I'm going to place one of the large ore mines at the head. One of, kind of one of the corners of my mining pit here. So this is obviously a super cool, impressive looking asset. It's got this big drill on the end of it. I'm pretty sure these are called like excavate, excavators, are they? Excavators, I think that's the word. Anyway, super huge looking drill things. And then, yeah, they look really, really good. I really like these things. And leave yourself a little bit of headroom towards the bottom of the road. So this way, what you can do is if you dive into your rock assets, and you can detail the hell out of this thing. So a lot of exposed rock is really key to kind of making these things look as natural as possible. So just throw in a couple of these little decals here. Throw them in, spin them around, and just kind of get different angles on them, and then actually grab some rock assets themselves. Some of these little ones, and then place them around the head. You'll make it look as though there's lots of exposed sand of stone and rock that this thing is tearing out of the earth. Now, obviously, if you are playing with mods, then you can do dramatically better looking stuff than this. Uh, but you know, these vanilla decals um, are are usable for this kind of build so when we, once we get to the detail and end that will definitely kind of do a little bit more of this so go ahead and find a place for your large ore drill in your pit so now i want some kind of mining feature down at this one over here what i'm going to do is draw in another road using the dirt roads again and the dirt roads work really well and you can't imagine at least from kind of some of the images that i've looked for that all companies don't tend to tarmac the actual mining pits themselves it's very much just dirt road but it's up to you if you want to use the industrial road entirely your decision then i'm going to switch to my small ore mine underground i'm going to place in a couple of these now these have got really nice textures on them they obviously kind of go underground and you could do some pretty nice things with these especially with the rocks around the back of it again we dive into our our rock stuff we can actually grab some of the rock assets and I place these around lots of overgrowth as well is a nice idea especially on the kind of these these hilly sides on the back here and, you know you can kind of take these things obviously if you're playing with mods you can make sure you fit these things in uh, but again you know we'll, we'll kind of cover that once we get towards the detailing side of things so a couple of underground ore mines next to each other will work out tremendously well I do like these Got a nice, uh, nice little bit of detail on them here as well, these little huts. Okay, then I'm just going to draw my two roads here together. So I'm going to bring this one down. 
then hook them in like that. And then draw a little bit of a box in around this one as well. So really for kind of your ore extraction, two smalls and a large will be fine in order to service all your factories and resource production buildings that you're going to be using. And then another building that works really nicely in the bottom of the pit is also the uh, maintenance building. Go ahead and throw this down on a road so that you can find it. It's got that kind of big industrial feel and you can imagine this is where they had almost like store tools, process rubbish, rubbish, store vehicles, etc. No, kind of this big brutalist looking building and uh, I do like it, pretty cool. But this will also work nicely at the bottom of your pit as well. And then outside my large ore mine, I'm going to draw in another road. Without my road guard line off, up to the angle. And then just come behind the maintenance building. Obviously, your layouts will differ, but you can kind of get a general theme of what I'm looking for here. And then I'm also going to place in the ore grinding mill on the bottom as well, because it's just got like a little bit of like processing power to it. Then I'm going to place in a couple of ore grinding mills. And again, these look pretty good down on the floor. Got this kind of dirt texture to them. Now, you know, like they look a little bit kind of like they're, they're just ready to process that raw ore. Now, you're also going to be producing uh, metal from these things as well. So you can kind of just get a base idea of what it is that you want on the floor. Place those in. And then you'll be, uh, you'll be good to go. But you get the general idea of digging out a pit and then filling it with all your kind of your big chunky assets. And then as we start to climb out of the pit, we can begin to make things a little more refined and include uh, some of the other processing buildings as well, uh, which is what we'll do now. So of course, our people actually need a way into this thing. So that is what we'll give them. Uh, I'm going to bring my industrial road out here. And then what I'm going to do is just draw in a really rough box of industrial road all the way around my pit, just snapping to the angle. What you're really looking for here is to give this thing a border. And then we can come up like that. So from your bird's eye view, you'll have something that looks a little bit like that right now. Okay. Then come back into your dirt road, with all the snapping off. Go ahead and get the freeform. And then just find a little place where you can come out and hook into that uh, border road that you've just drawn around your pit. And I'm going to do this in a couple of places here as well. So coming back into my terraforming, I'm going to grab the softened terrain, small brush size. And then where we drew this connection in earlier and all the other ones that you might have around it. Go ahead and soften that out a little bit. Grab the dirt road. And then I'm just going to hook in. Okay. So do this at a couple of different places around the edge if you want to. And of course, we obviously want to actually hook into the ore mine itself. I want to come down here. So I know that I've got this road here. I'm going to come back into my soft terrain. Let's make a little bit of a, a natural ramp for the road to flow up just by right clicking and left clicking with the soft terrain tool. I'm going to draw my dirt road up and in. And then I'll repeat this at a few more places uh, around the bottom of the pit as well, just so they have you know different points of access. I uh, can maybe even go for one here as well. And I'll soften this one out and then push it back a little bit. Then just grab my dirt road. As you kind of place the dirt road in as well, it will almost like terraform itself around the land. Uh, but using the soft terrain tool will just give you a couple more options um, just to help you know make those little ascents as smooth as possible. Like this one might this one here might be a little bit too steep, probably definitely too steep actually. Uh, but you know, th there are some pretty if you, if you go and have a look at like a real life quarry, uh, we have a lot of them. Uh, where we live in the Lake District, there's a big slate mining industry here. Um, you know, and they're very steep sided um I'll try and remember to throw some pictures up on the screen of some of them that I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah. Go ahead and hook your, 
hook all your layers together, have them, um, you know, everything into the top and the bottom. And then we'll start to look at some shapes of where we're going to fit in. So I kind of like to focus everything around the main building. Might even move this over onto the corner now. So now what I want to do is I'm going to level the terrain out around the main building because I want a lot of this to be flat. Find a point and then we're going to push it all back. And the level terrain, you right click and then paint out. And whatever height you right clicked at is the height it will push everything else out to. And then we're going to start configuring a little one way system uh, around our main building here. I'm just going to draw it out like this. Uh, and then we're going to start placing in some of our other manufacturing buildings. So there's the fiberglass plant, which looks pretty good. Uh, you can kind of get a couple of these in along here as well. We'll have a look at those in a minute. Uh, the rotary kiln plant is also really kind of huge and industrial looking. So if you want that kind of big, chunky industrial boy, uh, to sit up along the front and you can do uh, so alongside the main road here uh, this is our border road i'm going to draw out this one way system again i'm going to place in a couple of fiberglass plants here i'll have one there and then draw my road out a little bit more and then one there so again Keeping my main buildings kind of overlooking my uh, or mining pit here will really help add to the aesthetic vibe. Now, these are pretty important, cool looking assets as well. So what I'm looking to generate here now is layers of height within the industry. So now that I have my little one way system flowing here, I'm going to hook back into my border road. You can make this border a one way as well if you want to. If you find you're having bad traffic with this and keeping everyone flowing around the edge uh, will help things out a little bit. Okay, and let's continue my little one-way system here. And then I'm going to have another road that comes behind my glass manufacture plants. And then I'm going to place in a rotary kiln. And this thing will sit straight behind them. So again, another huge, super mega important looking building. It's got these huge smokestacks on it. And all these like little shoots where you imagine uh, the coal is, or well, the ore is processed. Doesn't, I guess it's not specifically coal, right? Uh, but yeah. Great looking asset, super industrial. And we'll begin to see that layer of height now with the glass manufacturing plants in front and then the rotary kiln behind. Uh, obviously, depending on the demand of your city, you might find that you're having uh, more demand for kind of glass and ore. So if you need to, feel free to double up on these uh, processing buildings. No problem. Depends on the demands of your city. And then we'll hook our one-way system back in. So really, with these types of buildings here, you don't want too many um cars kind of pouring out onto the main road you want to make sure they're all flowing in one in one direction uh, and then i guess this one now we can turn back into a one-way road so these guys all four of them require ore so we need to give them like a little like a little supply that they can tap into so we're going to place in one of the storage buildings we're going to grab a regular industrial road snap to the angle I'm going to bring this as close to the road as we can grab it. Probably about there, I'll be fine. And then I'm going to come ahead and grab my ore industry storage and place this on that road. So we'll have this kind of texture coming up. You notice how kind of the fences are starting to double up on each other on either side of the road here, uh, which really helps us kind of gather that industrial feel. So, what, what I want to draw in now is a little bit of a power cell. Um, you know, I kind of like to integrate some of my uh, power and water utility buildings into the industrial build just because it helps them look a little bit more natural and you get some different assets in there. Uh, so we'll do some power and water stuff in here as well. Uh, obviously, some of the water stuff will depend on whether you have the natural disasters DLC, which I know not everybody has. Uh, so grab a one-way road. And the best looking power plant, in my opinion, for this one is probably the geothermal. Um, but you can use whatever you want. So I'm going to place this in and I want to make sure that it's right up alongside my road here. 
We're kind of the driving past it on the main road, right? And we're seeing this industrial kind of layer idea continue to continuing to develop. Uh, and then I'm just going to draw in a little box around it. Obviously, depending on the direction of your city, you might want to make it a little wider. Uh, and then this is where we can throw in some of our other little assets here. So if you have the Natural Disasters DLC, there's a tank reservoir and also the pumping service. And you can go for some of the water treatment stuff if you want to. Like there's the Advanced Inland Water Treatment Plant, which uh, looks, looks kind of nifty down here as well. Uh, he's got this kind of natural fence around it and some little water assets in here too. A little bit of a smokestack idea going on. If you want to factor in some of your water treatment here, then feel free. If you want to use the pollutive versions to make the industry feel a little bit dirtier, if that's the kind of the aesthetic vibe you want, then feel free to, to throw in. Obviously, you'll need Sunset Harbour for those. Okay, I think what I'm going to do here is next to my power station is throw in a little bit of ore storage uh, just for kind of the aesthetic purpose rather than functional. I'll place one of these in right here. And then box my road in around that. It's just another little cell tethered onto this border road. You can kind of get the idea here of how we're starting to build these layers and with a lot of the space between and kind of these areas here will be filling out with you know rocks and overgrowth and kind of broken shattered fencing you can do a couple of different ideas with them and then maybe let's go ahead and work on that little water treatment idea so i know that i want a couple of these tank reservoirs in here so place two of these in next to each other and then just give them a little bit of a box as well. And before you know it, when you're kind of tethering all these little industrial assets together, um, you'll be, obviously don't forget to actually hook these into your city network. Yeah, so once you're kind of tethering all these little industrial looking assets onto the border road, before you know it, you'll kind of have this little, almost like blocks of design, uh, all focused around this central pit here. And before we jump into the detailing guys, uh, we also want to make sure that we draw a district over the industrial area uh, because of course we are going to be working with some old school vanilla uh, industry stuff. Come into your specializations, give that district an ore specialization and then we're going to zone in uh, a couple of little bits of uh, industry here. So just kind of randomly place these, uh, use them as detailing not as kind of the, as the, the area's money maker. Uh, you know, where you've got some spare tiles, just come ahead and throw in little touches of uh, industrial detailing. And uh, you will thank yourself for it in the long run. You'll notice as they start to appear, we'll wait for a couple to pop in here, and we've got some industrial demand. Uh, and you'll kind of get a little idea of how these assets look. Might look like coal pits out the front, getting some more of these little smokestacks coming in. You can kind of do what you please with these, you know. Uh, place them in randomly. Maybe get some down in here as well. I'll have a look at what generates in. You can see we've got some like little, almost like supplementary support drills here. At least that's what they look like. So maybe now I might want a couple of these in down here. So let's go for a couple of these little two by twos in. Let's kind of see what we get popping up in uh, in various different areas. Do you, you know, just keep uh, experiment with them if you don't like it, if you don't like the way it's kind of feeling, and then uh, go ahead and delete them until you just have something uh, that you like, really. So we'll go ahead and jump into the detailing time lapse. I'm going to go ahead and surround this thing with a thick, lush forest, lots of fence detailing, and get some big rocks uh, in and around this thing as well. So, as always, we'll be right back.
all right guys that is going to do it for today i want to thank you all so much for watching if you've enjoyed a like below is always appreciated if you, much if you haven't enjoyed it please feel free to leave a dislike as well lots of rocks and overgrowth and trees are key to making these things look really nice uh, you know you want that kind of exposed rock feel like um humanity has ripped a hole in the earth and you know really kind of scarred the landscape uh, is really helpful for making these all industrial areas come to life a little bit more. I also threw in a recycling center just again for some of those more industrial asset vibes and also a touch of office zoning almost as like kind of a head office, a little bit of HR administration type stuff uh, in there as well. Uh, the regular gravel paths look really good for filling out some of those empty areas that you can see down in the bottom and also just kind of making them look a little dirtier as well. Hang around for the rest of the outro Taj and look forward to seeing this thing at night time. I'm sure it'll look really cool with all the pit kind of lit up and some of those larger factories towards the back here as well kind of shining uh, in the moonlight. But I will leave it there. That is it for the industry's modular builds, finally. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for watching, and as always, enjoy the rest of your day.